This is Face the State with Rob Hanrahan and the political insiders Tony May and Charlie Giroux. Welcome back here with John Goodwin. He is the Director of Animal Cruelty Policy with the Humane Society of the United States. And joining us now is Charlie Giroux, our political insider for the Republicans, and Tony May for the mm -hmm. Democrats. Guys, thank you for joining us, as always. always. good to be with you. All right, so let's start off uh, with a big talker, and this is the, the pigeon shoot bill. This is House Bill 1750. Um, Charlie, let's start with you. Well, before we get there, let's get a look at you and your organization. Right. How many times have you been arrested? I've been arrested when I was a juvenile and a young man. Back in the 1990s, I was a radical. I renounced Just all of that in the late 90s, <laughs> and I've been a pretty big critic but of that ever since then. you have supported the destruction of private property, including arson, to quote unquote protect these animals, correct? We're the organization that believes in second chances. That's why we took why Michael, took Michael Vick, Vick and, we, and we put him that. out in front of people, let him speak against dogfighting. By the same token, I was brought in as a young man once I realized that my youthful ways were ridiculous and spoke out, wrote columns, spoke to conferences and helped discourage that sort of activity. Let's talk about bird shoots. You don't think that pheasants should be shot either, do you? Well, my real issue is let's with talk pigeons. About, let's go beyond that. You don't think pheasants should be shot either, do you? We don't, I'm not, it's not something I engage in. The, the but society I does not believe in that, do they? It's and not, you would like to see that outlawed, wouldn't you? Actually, I don't think that that's a policy of ours. But you policy. would like. Let's talk about what your true motives are here, because well, you've drawn this equivalency between people and animals. And no, if they are I the do same, not. your organization no, does, and no, they have do on record. No, we do not. They we do not. We do not believe in the moral equivalency between species. What we believe is that humans, being a very exceptional in, creation, in the of creation, believe it. At a San Francisco conference, did not your organization say precisely that? and that biomedical technology and hunting as a sport should be essentially done away with. I wasn't at the conference in 1980. I was seven years old. And I well, can tell you. All right, no, let's no, get back no, to the pigeon not. shoot. Well, 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 I, I, and I, and well, I understand. Pigeon shoot is a canard. And, and I understand, but that would be a duck if, 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 if that we need to get That's the point. They don't exactly. want you to hunt ducks from blinds. Well, they don't want you to hunt pheasants. They don't want you to hunt quail. They don't want you to hunt any birds. That's what it boils down to. First off, we do believe in human exceptionalism. We reject hum uh, moral equivalency, and we believe that humans have a responsibility to treat animals with dignity and respect. Now, capturing a pigeon in New York, bringing her to Pennsylvania, and releasing her out of a box so she can be so shot you were completely tower shoots as well, that. correct? I'm not very familiar with tower shoots, but I can tell you that you having a disoriented shoots and bird. You don't know about tower shoots. I've been to a pigeon shoot. All right, let's let's move on they to Tony. Go to the same place. All right, well, let's let's get some some there. comment from Tony. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's get some comments from Tony let, let me, let me on ask, House Bill 1750. On a more positive basis here, uh, and it's and it is that the the tethering, what you call, I mean that there's not much sport in releasing an animal from a cage and then saying kill it, as opposed to tracking it down in the field, uh, stomping or track, tracking its footprints or having a dog to catch the scent. There, it, there, isn't that part is of that the Is that part issue? of the House bill as well? Well, look, pigeon shoots are more appropriately aligned with cockfighting. There is no hunt. They're not eating the animal after the animal is killed. They're animals that are released out of a box and shot for a competition. Just like with cockfighting, you have people that are betting on the, in this case, on the accuracy of the shooters. Just like with the cockfight, you have piles of dead birds. Just like with the cockfight, you have an activity that has no socially redeemable value whatsoever. There's no wildlife management component here. So really, pigeon shoots don't even belong in the same debate as hunting or any other type of wildlife management. So I, I do have a question I wanted to ask that's totally off the issue of le legislation, but it's, it seems that every time I go on the internet, I can't avoid seeing one, two, or three videos of dogs or cats that I did, wasn't seeing in, you know, 10 years ago. Has this had an impact on public opinion? Are you guys behind this in some way? Are you saying like cute pictures or oh, negative yeah. pictures? Oh, no, cute pictures. I yeah. mean, look what, the, just, just go on Facebook any, any, any time. And it seems that they're from people I don't know. Sure, sure. I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, well, I love course, to see a, a dog well, open a door and make a milkshake, you know. Well, I think that that's a, a, an organic thing. I think that we are, as a culture, are starting to respect animals more. We're learning more about science, which shows that animals have more personalities than we thought, characteristics that we didn't understand that they had. 
And also, just with the advent of social media, people are looking for content to put up there that's enjoyable. And they enjoy seeing their pets do funny things or cute things. And I think all of that does contribute to a glow, growing awareness about animal welfare in our society. And, and let me and say this, Tanya, you know me. You know I'm an animal lover. Absolutely. And there is a huge distinction between animal welfare organizations, which are in the mainstream, and animal quote unquote rights organizations like his, which are really yes, completely, out completely out of the mainstream. Completely out of the mainstream. You are by your own no, definition, we're not. No, we're and you not. are by your own statements. And no, we are you not. You have a person, I think his name is John McAdle or John McAdler, who has said that bioethical considerations are such that human beings who are quote unquote brain dead or something to that effect should be substituted for animals in medical research. Does that fairly represent the position of your organization? Not only does that not represent the, the, our organization, I don't he even said know who that, that though, is. Doesn't he? Didn't he, he? I would suggest that leaving, leave behind some conference from 1980 by your no, own admission, that's more, where you're getting much, your, your no, content this was much from. More ra this was go much more recent. Go to humanesociety.org and see what our policies really are. Well, let's see what some of your former employees have said. Okay, because they former said employees. That they, former employees, sure. recently former employees, that say that you're not in the business of protecting animals, that you have a much more radical political agenda, and that really you're just a giant fundraising machine which pays top okay, executives well, let's huge salaries and doesn't have any of that translate down, and that you use those nice pictures that Tony referred to that touch my heart part two to promote a much more radical agenda. We actually have quite low salaries, especially when you consider the size of the organization. Our CEO makes half of what the CEO at the NRA makes. So if you're concerned about executive pay, go and criticize the NRA and leave the Humane Society of the United States alone. When our CEO took over, he took what's a pay your, what's cut. Your, what's your total budget? About $120 million a year. And what's your total budget on fundraising? I'll blow the industry standard what according to all of... Uh, according to Charity Navigator, what is it? I don't, I'm not in the accounting department, but it's but according to Charity Navigator and other charity ranking services, we always end up with like top rankings because we put so much money and time into protecting animals. Let me ask one quick question about Lancaster County, very nearby here. Kreider Farms was attacked by you with a piece of film that you sent to ABC News, one of our competitors, that they aired. Was that actually taken at Kreider Farms? Absolutely. We do, when we do these undercover investigations, we turn over the unedited footage, unedited footage to law enforcement, to the proper authorities. And you're aware that immediately after that aired, the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture was there and said that they passed every standard with flying colors. You're aware of that, Incredibly correct? low standards, sure. But standards of common decency, not at all. And those standards have been called into question for years, uh, which is why dog law in the 2008 was passed. So that's been a huge debate here in Pennsylvania but as well. I, I, but as a, as a hunter, and as a hunter in the family myself, there is a correlation between hunting and wanting to be against animal cruelty. Those are completely two separate right, topics. But, the, but these folks are against hunting. They no. don't want to admit Again, it. John, you, no, you have not, said it on no, the public no, record no, before. You no, said crazier <laughs> stuff than that. That conference and, in 1980 and, that you keep talking about? Just right. so you know, we don't even have any of the same employees we got to take a quick break. Tony, one last thought from you since we haven't heard from you much. <laughs> one of the biggest businesses in Pennsylvania is the animal agriculture, raising animals for meat. Uh, do you guys have a position on chickens or raising cows, or handling of dairy cows? Is it, are we doing okay in your estimation? Well, I think that by the virtue of the fact that hens have wings, they should have enough room to flap them. That pigs have four legs, they should have enough mo uh, room to move around. And so we campaign for industrial agriculture to expand the space. Don't keep these animals confined in tiny little conditions where they can't even move around. And so that's a big campaign effort of ours. All right. John Goodwin with the Humane Society, thank you so much for your time, thank for you. being here. And we have to take another quick break, but when we come back, John Mysick joins us with our Keystone Commentary.